Hello everyone, uh, this is Abhid from Texas Instruments uh, and uh, uh, welcome to the third and the final video in this, uh, in this chain. Uh, in the past two videos we have discussed about the overview of the Sixlopan uh, specifications um, and the Contiki Sixlopan uh, based solution offering which is there in the open source and um, uh, the, in detail what all stack layers uh, does it uh, have in, inside it, uh, how, how about the certification, how the certification goes, how the network th usually looks like. Uh, in this video, as I mentioned earlier also, uh, that uh, we will be discussing about how to uh, set up the environment, how to set up the network at your own end, following the instructions on uh, certain URLs, the, the wiki the wiki uh, URLs on which uh, the instructions have uh, been uh, mentioned in a pretty clear and uh, defined uh, manner. All you have to do is you have to just stick to those instructions um, and subsequently I'm going to show you how your setup should look like and uh, how to doubly check that uh, all the things are working uh, correctly. So moving forward, uh, Contiki tools. So you, as I said, uh, you need to have the instant Contiki for your um, Contiki open source uh, examples making and developing, uh, also building your own end application. Um, for for the respective tool chains for the respective platforms uh, and you need to have the Puja network simulator in case you don't want to work on the hardware uh, directly so uh, the third and the uh, one of the most important uh, uh, tool is the Wireshark packet sniffer uh, which is actually need to know uh, which I actually used to know uh, the, the activity which is happening over the network and uh, very very important from the compliance proving perspective that whether uh, the, the communication which is happening is it's local compliant or not and uh, what kind of data is being exchanged how the fragmentation how the 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 uh, packet exchange the communication between the nodes is happening what is the duty cycle what is the periodicity all that details can be um, seen in the sniffer log of Wireshark. so there is a dedicated URL for the for building the sniffer for uh, the 2.4 gigahertz and 7 gigahertz network uh, that is also a part of wiki uh, so you just have to follow it again link to the main quantity 6 local quantity hyphen 6 local wiki page um, and it's pretty straightforward quantity 6 local development kit uh, you have a cc2650 development kit which comprises of one smart 06 sorry two smart 06 uh, development kits evaluation boards and then uh, you have uh, two, six, two six CC two six five zero EMs. So these EMs actually get mounted on these RF EMK connectors. The so USB gets connected on this port, and uh, Smart R zero six EB, which is actually a XGS hundred B three driver, mounts itself on your PC as two ports. One as the back channel uh, UART, and one as the JDAC. So the UART uses uh, is used by the the, uh, the PC utilities or uh, the Teratom, the Teratom or Doclight for whatever uh, serial port console uh, output or communication is been done by CC266 or 136 devices. The other is the sensor attack kit. So you have support of both, that is the CC2650 EM and CC2650 sensor attack. In the CC266 examples of uh, demo and web demo, CC266 is hyphen demo and CC266 is hyphen web hyphen demo. And for CC2538, uh, you have to have CC2538 EMs again being mounted on smart f 06 cd um, For the edge router, you need to have BeagleBone Black or Beagle Board also and the CC2531 dongle which gets connected on the USB port of uh, BeagleBone Black or Beagle Board uh, White. Um, the only difference is, the, as you know, that BeagleBone Black offers the onboard EMMC flash and uh, higher RAM. In case of Beagle Board, uh, you don't have onboard EMMC flash and you have a lesser RAM. But both are very much capable to run the edge router functionality. So how to get started? So first you have to go to the contikeyuvers.org and download the latest instant contiki, which is essentially a virtual machine for uh, developing the entire contiki um, uh, six uh, stack and uh, it, it uh, uh, can be downloaded from contikeyuvers.org. Um, once you uh, download it and uh, then go to the github.com hyphen quantity hyphen os hyphen quantity and download oblique git clone the firmware so you can git clone from the instant quantity and um, or from any linux machine and then copy 
those uh, those downloaded files into instant contiki machine from step one and uh, then go to the ti six and wiki so you can see the link uh, detail it's a contiki hyphen six and that is the main page of wiki of six and wiki and uh, you just have to follow instructions uh, we will however go through the page uh, in this video also i'll just tell you where to find the uh, what Explore the examples provided. As I said, there are two uh, demos uh, which are applicable to CC266 and 136 both. Uh, with the respective platform tool chain in the make instruction, you can build it for respective platforms. Simple example that connects to six slopan network, reads the sensor and periodically sends out a BLE advertisement packet and um, is a is a peer to peer. CC266 web demo runs MQTT client, connects to IBM Cloud, runs CoAP server, UDP UART. HTTP web server and BLE advertisement daily. So the thing is, it all in all, it runs one. Sorry, it runs one, two, three, four, and five. Five processes in parallel. So examples are documented in Contiki and on Wiki. So for details of all the services, you can go and have a look on that. Uh, so let's discuss in detail about the mesh uh, demo. That is the CC two six six web by the demo description. So there is an edge router. Which again uh, uses uh, which which comprises of vehicle bone black with a CC two five three one dongle. So in case of two point four gigahertz, CC two five three one dongle is being used. In case of sub one gigahertz, uh, smart array zero six EB along with CC one three one zero EM mounted on it is being used. The only thing is that this USB dongle gets directly mounted on the USB port of vehicle bone black. And in case of one three XX, there is a USB port, the micro USB cable which gets mounted on the USB port of vehicle bone black. On top of it, the 6 LBR, which is again the open source uh, border router or edge router application, uh, is, which which actually does the entire edge router application or edge router functionality for the network. It is based on enhanced Contiki. 6 LBR is a deployment ready for industrial use cases. No need to be Contiki expert to get started. You just have to git clone it, go on its web page, on its git page. They also have a wiki page. And they explain it in detail how to get clone it or how to download the package and then unpack it or install that package on the Beagle Bone Black. Uh, web server, all all these instructions which I just mentioned are actually explained in detail on Wiki, which we will take a look on it. Web server for configuration and visualization of nodes. So it runs a web server on which individually node of the low pack. Every single node of the six lopan network formed through six LBR service running on Beagle Bone Black can be accessible with its individual web server page. So, if there are five nodes in the six lopan network, the six LBR page, when accessed through your PC or any other machine in the network. Each node, which is visible on the web page of the six LBR, will allow you to access that node's web server page individually. For backhaul, uh, standard backhaul network internet connectivity, you need to have the standard MAC64 open source RAP6 translate between IPv6 and IPv4, and for the connection to standard internet. Mesh device, that is the node of the network. Every single node. Is a mesh device in this web demo application. CC two six five zero sensor tag or CC two six five zero EM on Smart R zero six EB runs Contiki on it. What all services it runs? MQTT client connect to IBM Cloud Server and push sensor data. UDP wireless UART that is use UART to send receive data to and from any IP address. Basically, using this application or process on each node. You can open a socket, or through edge router, you can open a UDP socket to individual node and send the data to that node, addressed by the unique IP of that node. So basically, how does it work is that once the edge router opens the UDP socket to each node of the network, whatever data it gets on its UART is being sent. Out to that specific node, or in case of edge router six LBR, you will open, you will use a netcat application 
which is the next UART application, which is again can be downloaded. Just open a UDP socket to a specific IP. Whatever you type, it gets delivered to that node and the node, which is either CC2650 or CC13XX, simply forwards that payload on its UART. So if you have to have a communication between two hosts, then what you can do is you can have 6LBR opening a netcat, opening a UDP socket through netcat to a specific node, whether it is CC2660 or NPXS, send the data on that UDP socket once opened, that data gets delivered at the UART of 2C6 or 13 xx and reaches the host of CC2 6 or 13 xx node that is the mesh device. That node can then again send whatever response if configured for that response directly reaches to the 6 LBR edge of that. This can happen between the two nodes also instead of only being edge router and nodes. The other process which it runs is the co-op server, exposing its resources, sensors, use set and get to interact. Uh, for accessing the co-op server and its services and its resources, you need to install a add-on into Mozilla Firefox. So that add-on comes by name Copper CU. Copper is a free installable add-on on Mozilla Firefox. As soon as you install it, it allows you to access the co-op server on each mesh device. And then once you access or once you click on the co-app server page of that mesh device, it exposes its all the resources and sensors data to you. The other service apart from MQTT client, UDP, UI wireless, UART and co-app server, it, each mesh device is running is HTTP web server. That is the sensor data, device config, MQTT config, all the configuration details. UDP 6 LBR client, obviously, is because 6 LBR is the edge router and is running the server. To form the entire network, it needs to run a client service on each mesh device. Shows network topology in 6LBR web interface. How the nodes are connected, what is the link, what is the path and all. BLA advertisement packets sent out periodically configurable over co-app. So through the co-app server, you can configure its periodic interval and turn it on and off also. So in case of CC266, it's not an issue. But in case of CC13XX, the BLE advertisement support is only and only extended on the CC13501, which is still under preview and is supposed to release next quarter or the first quarter of 2016. The total footprint of this such a big application demo is only 105 KB of flash and 18 KB of RAM. So you still have got about 25 KB of flash or 23 KB of flash to be size and 2 KB of RAM on sensor. Co-app server copper client, as I said, it gets it's a free to download. Once it, it gets installed and gets, you can see here that on Mozilla Firefox, it actually appears as a button. So once you click on the page of it, I'll show you where to click. This is the page which you see in which all the services of the co-app server running on each mesh devices are open. This page, you can see that has an IP address and on it, it shows all the discovered services. MQTT IBM Cloud IoT Foundation Quick Start. You can go on it and then you can see how to access it and then you can register it. You can see your nodes individual data from anywhere, any part of the world on web. Where to get support? The best in the, the quickest way is the Quantiki community because they are the ones who have developed the entire Quantiki OS, the stack, and uh, they, they know the best. So they will be the quickest ones. Moreover, there are so many people, there's such a huge resource of open source uh, community that uh, keep looking on this and then try to always help as soon as possible uh, in, in all the other queries of people. So, and but uh, apart from content community, the other uh, platform which is there for the help is E2E, TIE2E forums. You can always put your queries there also. Uh, I and uh, the Texas Instruments Business Unit team keep looking at E2E forums and there are a lot of people from TI also now looking on it and uh, always there to address the queries as soon as possible. Can I use Contiki in commercial products for free and without any requirement? Yes, Contiki is a DHGT plus license. The only thing which I honestly feel is that the only thing which they, these people want is they should 
you should not delete their name that's it otherwise every every single thing of the the offering is free to use multiple times for more information just go on all these links uh, wiki is 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 the place where uh, we we can find everything and uh, keep checking the wiki for the updates because uh, people people keep contributing to it uh, with multiple pages as and when uh, things things uh, develop and gradually move forward